All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so um, today I'm gonna address um, this comment from James VZ Seven RQ regarding a video replacement theology debunked by preaching by Pastor Andrew Sluter. All right, so um, I don't want to read the whole. This guy wrote a book here, but he, if I could make this easy for somebody, I'm going to do that. Um, so basically, this is going to be for James. All right, so I'm talking to you, James. James VZ7RQ. All right, so the premise that you're starting with is wrong. And because the premise is wrong, all this is garbage. Okay, <laughs> to put it simply. The premise that you're starting with is this idea that 1948 Israel is biblical. It is not. All right. We that are... Christians today are the nation of God. We are the children of God. We are Israel. Israel is the nation of God. Israel is the children of God. All right. It, you, you have to understand that if you don't get that, you, the whole thing is going to be lost. All right. So let's start off in Exodus 19 and just establish the fact that or not 19 yeah 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 19 right there it is and just establish the fact that Israel is the nation the holy nation of God okay and I want you to let's just read verse 5 and 6 now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, and then uh, I'll... Let's draw a parallel verse here, if I'm remembering correctly. I might be way off here. No, here it is. Notice here in 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, first of all, let me read it. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Notice the parallels here. We got peculiar people, right? In Exodus 19, verse 5, you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, Oops. Notice here, a royal priesthood. You shall be a kingdom of priests and holy nation and holy nation. See, the, it's undeniable. <clears throat> so, in time past, these were the people of God in Exodus 19. But now, are we the people of God? Alright, see, now in the time past, they were the children of Israel. But now, we are the children of Israel. Alright, that's number one. Alright, hold on to your britches. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3.
Okay, now to Abraham, verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. All right, James, I hope you're watching this, buddy. Okay, so the whole premise of Israel is based on the promise to Abraham and his seed. There is no Israel without Abraham. There is no promise without Abraham. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not in the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. Now, did you catch that? He saith not into seeds. All right, so you're wanting to ignore this and say that Christ is just one of many seeds. All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but that's what you imply in your book that you wrote me. You have to get over that. You have to be honest about this. And <laughs> without it, you're not going to understand. And if you don't care about the truth, then why waste your time? Really? You're not going to fool me. You're going to fool people that don't know the Bible. Have fun with that. Okay? But you're not fooling me. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed which is Christ. Alright, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So there is no two paths to everlasting life. There's only one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. And this is true for everybody that's ever been born. There has never been another way to eternal life. Jesus is the only way for all. All right? So the promise to Abraham and his seed was never to Abraham's uh, grandchild. Is that right? Uh, it was never to Israel, <clears throat> excuse me, or never to Jacob. And it was never... It was never to Jacob through his seed, it says, as in physical seed. Never. It was never a promise of eternal life given to those of the seed of Israel. It was always to Abraham and his seed. And that seed being Christ, always. You can go back to Genesis 3. Let's do this. Go back to Genesis 3 from the very beginning. This has not changed. Now, the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Her seed, 
being Christ, the woman representing the children of God, the serpent representing the children of the wicked one, and his heel being Christ. All right, this is a prophecy that will be completely fulfilled when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, there's no other way to interpret this. All right, if you look at it any other way, you're wrong. If you are a child of God, your eyes should be open. You ought to be able to see it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It really is. To Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Right? And so what did Abraham do? Well, he was going to sacrifice his own son. And God stopped him. Abraham did that out of faith. Because he did that out of faith in God. God stopped him and gave him the promise to Abraham and his seed. He saith not seeds. Okay, so the promise to Abraham and his seed and that seed being Christ, which is the Son of God, which is God's Son that was born of a virgin who did all the work necessary for us to have eternal life not just us but for all that have ever been born that's pretty simple all right so it's pretty simple all right so uh, I already explained here in Romans 11 James you didn't get it the first time. Will you get it the second time? See, I wrote a book too. I can write books. So, let's address Romans 11 real quick. I kind of wanted to make this quick. Real quickly, uh, let's roll through a couple of these anyways. Oh. <clears throat> uh, What's your main one? What's your main one, James? 23, 26. <laughs> okay, so let's do it this way. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted in, be grafted into their own olive tree? Okay, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All right, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Of course, obviously, Jesus takes away sin. He died for our sins, and not ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Now, this is real simple stuff here. The problem is when people try to imagine 1948 Israel as a part of this. It's not at all. There is no biblical relation between 1948 Israel and, and the Word of God. There's no, there's no, no, no connection there. No relation. Period. In order to make the claim that 1948 Israel is biblical, you have to make the claim that Jesus Christ has returned 
when the city of God has come down out of heaven and is established on the earth and there is no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying. Okay, obviously, none of that has happened. Obviously. All right. Now, that's the only way. And then, on top of that, uh, let's, how do we put this? Here, let me find uh, James's own words here. All right, well, first of all, let me say this, that the restoration of Israel is at the second coming of Christ. All right, when we are lifted up, transformed into our glorified bodies and set back down on the earth, on new heavens and a new earth, and all, all, before we're set back down, all the wicked are killed. Just like what we read in Genesis 3. All right, so this idea that Israel, 1940 Israel, is the Israel of the Old Testament, New Testament, that it's nonsense. It's not. And there's no biblical um, connection there whatsoever. Now, what was I going to... Oh, I know, I know what it was. It was this idea that you're presenting, right? It's going to be right here. All right, there it is. The Jewish rebuilt temple. All right, that, that's another one. See, it's incredible. When you don't understand one thing, the whole thing is going to be unintelligible. In order to say that there is a Jewish rebuilt temple, well, you think the Antichrist is going to rebuild the temple? Is it, just be honest, is that what you believe? Because what you're doing is saying that Jesus is the Antichrist. I mean, just be honest. You, you just, you're going about it in a funny way, but that's what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, you're going to take advantage of people that don't know the Bible. But you're not going to fool me. And it's not the truth. And so it really comes down to what is more important, the truth or your little fantasy land that people are saved simply by being of a certain genealogy. You know yourself that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. Because flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God, that completely nullifies the idea of 1948 Israel being the Israel of God. The temple was already rebuilt. It's already been rebuilt. It was rebuilt when Jesus laid down his life and brought it back up again. All right. So the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9 is in regards to Jesus laying down his life and then bringing it back up. All right. The Jews did not understand that then and the Jews do not understand that today and apparently James you don't either <laughs> so who rebuilt the temple well is it was Jesus and now you're calling Jesus the Antichrist That's, um, yeah, I mean, just be honest. That's what you believe. Now consider what is written in Daniel 9. 
let's see, consider the vision. Right there it is. Consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now, who could this be talking about? I don't know. Well, it must be the Antichrist, huh? No? No, you can't. You can't make that claim. You look like a moron. No. The only way to fool people is to keep reading and then through very uh, very subtly turn it from the Christ into the Antichrist. <laughs> but you got to be some kind of moron, really. Well, maybe not just a moron, but somebody who does not have eyes to see the very plain written scripture. All right? This is clearly speaking of Christ. Know therefore and understand. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. The street is the way. Jesus is the way. And no man comes to the Father but by him. All right. This is not rocket science. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be killed. But not for himself. But for the whole world. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the people of the prince, the Jews of that time, shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. They shall kill him. All right. Even as they have of the Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Yet yeah, you want to say these guys are the Israel of God. That's ridiculous. It was the Romans that actually killed Jesus, but it was the Jews that made him do it. But Actually, neither one of them killed him. Rather, Jesus laid down his life. He allowed it to happen. He laid down his life for us. All right. In the end, therefore, I'm sorry. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. Who's saved? Who's not saved? And he shall confirm the covenant, the promise of eternal life, and the forgiveness of sins with many for one week. Confirm. So, in other words, he, when he laid down his life, 
it was confirmed. It was confirmed. So when we read about him saying it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, confirmed it. It's a done deal. And he shall confirm it with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Why? Because he finished it. It is finished. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Even until the consummation, and the consummation is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. That's the consummation. When we are lifted up in the twinkling, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, First the dead in Christ, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the consummation. That's the coming together with the Lord Jesus. That's being transformed from a corruptible body into an incorruptible body, from a mortal body into an immortal body. All right? And then, of course, at our feet will be our enemy gathered, and they will be destroyed. Along with the whole earth, there will be a new heavens and a new earth. All right? And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate, the wrath of God. All right? It's pretty simple stuff. It's not rocket science. It's all confirmed all throughout the Bible from Genesis to revelation this idea that the antichrist makes an end of sins well you're on the wrong side of the fence partner you're on the wrong side of it and um, you know if your eyes are closed what can I do to open them and this is why I you probably uh, some of you not you, James, but others that have followed me for a while. That's This is why I say it is so important to have a King James Bible and to believe and to know that those words in the King James Bible come directly from God above. Without that faith, I don't know how anybody understands anything. Really, I don't. You don't believe the Bible you hold in your hands? How is it possible to understand anything? Well, it's possible because they believe a little bit. They believe a little bit. All right? But if you really want your eyes open, you ought to know that the King James Bible that you hold in your hands, it comes directly from God. Thy word is settled in heaven forever, O Lord. Thy word is is settled in heaven. You think about faith, the power of faith, the importance of faith all throughout history. How could anything have ever happened without faith? Uh, this, I mean, it's incredible. You can't see it. <laughs> you can't see the importance of faith. I mean, it's it's incredible. And you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. You believe you've got to learn Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and Japanese and Chinese, Portuguese. And I mean, come on. Is that what you believe? Because the Bible's clear. That thy word is settled in heaven. You don't believe that? Acts chapter 2, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? The word of God transcends all languages for all time forever and ever. What kind of God do you worship that does not speak 
is not able to speak English. We got to get a translation of what God said from another language that we nobody's born into. That's a weird and strange God that you worship. No wonder you don't understand anything. No wonder you make the wild ass claim that. The Antichrist is going to rebuild the temple. You're basically saying Jesus is the Antichrist with that sort of ignorant and moronic statement. Okay. Now, without faith, I don't know how you understand anything. So that's really where it starts. Um, you know, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And then knowing that Jesus is real and that the Word of God is true and knowing where to find the Word of God, the Spirit of Truth will lead you to the Word of God and the Spirit of Truth will bring to you in remembrance all things. Okay? All you have to do is trust God. <laughs> Believe in God, because it's this is all going to pan out exactly as this Bible says. All right, whether no matter what you say or what Reverend Smitty says, the Bible is going to hold true. All right, so James, of course, um. I would like for you to understand this. It's real simple. We today that are Christians that are saved and born of the Spirit of God, I, I look, I get it. Not everybody that says they're Christian are Christian. Okay. But those of us that are born of God, born of the Spirit of God, we are the children of of God. We are born of God. We are the children of God. We are the sons of God. We are Israel. Israel is the children of God. Israel is the nation of God. Israel is the people of God. All right. And so in the Old Testament, there was a group of people with boundaries. You know that. You ought to know it. Right? So, this group of people, inside the group of people, was the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean that they were all saved, just because they were born. Alright, but the, the kingdom of God was within this boundary of people. Alright, known as Israel and the twelve tribes of uh, the twelve tribes of uh, oh, what am I? What's the word I'm looking for? Twelve twelve tribes of Israel. All right, so you've got uh, the twelve tribes, and then you got Israel and Judah. Yeah, you, know, you got a, this constant thing going on in history. But all while the kingdom of God is within this group of people. All right? So now comes Jesus. And Jesus comes along and he tears down that wall where there's no longer a boundary but rather the kingdom of God is now available for whosoever believes in him all right so there's no longer a boundary now this is going to change again when we are lifted up into the air and all the wicked ones are going to be completely cut off All right. It's really that simple. What I don't know what in the world you're thinking, buddy. 
You think people are saved just for simply being born? You've got to recognize the fact that flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom of God. It never has. That's not a new thing. That's an established fact forever and ever. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. All right. <laughs> so if you know that, then that completely nullifies, eliminates this idea that people are saved simply by being born. All right. I mean, you're just lying to yourself. Whenever you make this wild ass claim that people are the children of God or the Israel of God simply for being born, even though they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And then what's even crazier, James, is now you're putting yourself outside of the kingdom of God by saying you're not Israel. You're not a child of God. You're not part of the promises of God. It's unbelievable. I don't. The thing is, when your eyes are closed, you're not going to see it. Consider what Jesus says in John chapter 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of. Here, I want. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He's making a very clear distinction between the flesh and the Spirit. This is not a new thing. This is uh, echoed all throughout the Bible, really. It's being revealed to us in greater detail, of course by the words of the Lord Jesus Christ here in the New Testament. This is not a, exactly a new thing. All right. You consider circumcision. Circumcision. Um, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. This is what this means to cut off the flesh from the spirit. All right. So when Jesus talks about being born of God, he's talking about being born of the spirit of God. And when you're born of the spirit of God, you will never die. You have everlasting life. You have eternal security forever and ever. You can never lose it. It'll never be taken away from you. And it's interesting to me. Jesus says, you're a master of Israel and you don't know this? James, are you a master of Israel? A master of who? Israel. A master of Israel. Are you a master of Israel and you don't understand these things? You're just like this Nicodemus fella. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. And James, you don't get it? Well, to me, what this shows me is the chances are, number one, you're a new believer or number and or number two you're putting your trust in what somebody else has taught you okay you're not trusting the word of God you're trusting what Reverend Bob taught you and you're trying to make it fit with what the word of God says because you don't have confidence in your own ability to discern the word of God yourself so you're gonna put your trust in man and because you're putting your trust in man God has allowed you to believe this delusion. All right, 
And then also, of course, the other aspect is not believing the actual Bible, that which falls in line with that, because you are trusting in man rather than trusting God, the Word of God. So I want to encourage you and whoever else to full-on believe and know that the Word of God is from God. <laughs> that sounds silly to say, but the Word of God is from God. And God speaks all languages for all time, forever and ever. Right? So there's really no reason at all to not trust God. God is going to show you the truth if you believe in it, if you have faith. Right? You don't need another man to teach you, right? We need not that any man teach us. Some man probably told you something different. But right here, it's clearly in the scripture. Ye need not that any man teach you. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the, the dummies like me. All right, maybe the dummies like you. All right, that's what that word means. Making wise the simple. So you're not wise, but God is wise. And when you believe in God, you are made wise through him. There's no greater wisdom than what we get from the word of God. Okay. All right, James. So just to recap, man, you got to get over this idea that 1948 Israel is anything related to the Bible at all. It's not. Not at all. Those people reject Jesus Christ and they're on a fast track to H-E double hockey sticks. They're not part of the Israel of the Old Testament. They're not part of the Israel of the New Testament. All right. And then once you establish that, then I mean, you have to admit it. Then maybe you'll start to see these other things. But you're starting with the wrong assumption. Okay. Maybe you've been watching John Hagee too long. It's going to take a while for you to get over that worldview. That worldview will distort everything that you believe. You're starting off on the wrong foundation, man. Starting off on the wrong foundation. When you start off on the wrong foundation, everything else is going to crumble. So again... You, <laughs> you've got to get over it, man. You've got to get over it. All right, so this, uh, did, I don't know, I guess I'll finish on this. To be grafted in. To gra they were saved in the Old Testament, and now we're saved in the New Testament, and we're grafted together. It's not rocket science. All right, we, Christians today, we're not grafted in with... A bunch of people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, James, when you consider what you're teaching, it's beyond moronic. So just wipe clear the slate. Just wipe it clean and start over. Because this thing has corrupted your mind and corrupted everything that you see. This idea... That people over in the Middle East in 1948 created Israel. When you think that that's biblically related, it's going to screw up everything. You got to just wipe wipe that slate clean, start over, because that's screwing everything up, man. It's screwing everything up. I can I can tell. And you're you're getting that idea from a man and not from God. I can tell. When you have faith in God. Your eyes will be open. This should be as clear as day. It should be. You're trying too hard to work something that won't work. Okay. All right. So that's it. 
that's enough. But I appreciate I appreciate very much the conversation, and, and I encourage you to, to continue the conversation, and you know until you finally get it that hey those guys in oh that in Israel no the Israel of 1948 should not be confused with the Israel of the Old Testament, the Israel of the New Testament, the Israel of the Bible at all, period.